Welcome to GIS Resources. Today we're diving into a fascinating topic, interpolation. If you've ever wondered how we fill in the gaps between data points, or how we create continuous surfaces from scattered measurements, you're in the right place. Stay with us as we explore what interpolation is, why it's crucial, and how it's used in GIS. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of this essential concept, and you might even see the world around you a little differently. Let's get started. First, let's break down the concept of interpolation. Imagine you're trying to predict the weather across a vast region, but you only have data from a few weather stations. Interpolation is like connecting the dots, using mathematical estimation to guess the values in between those known points. This process helps create a continuous surface, a smooth map or model based on scattered sample data. In simpler terms, interpolation helps us predict unknown values between known points. It's used for a variety of data, from elevation and rainfall to temperature and pollution levels. Typically, we apply this technique to create either a raster or vector surface. In GIS, interpolation is often a raster operation, meaning it creates a grid-like map where each cell has a predicted value. So why do we interpolate? The answer lies in the nature of spatial data. Collecting data across an entire area can be costly and time-consuming. Instead, we take samples at specific locations and use interpolation to estimate the values for the entire region. The key assumption here is that things close to each other are more likely to have similar values. Think about the weather analogy. If it's raining on one side of the street, it's probably raining on the other side too. This principle makes interpolation an invaluable tool in fields like geography, meteorology, environmental science, and more. For instance, we can use interpolation to create elevation maps from GPS data, predict rainfall distribution, or even study environmental factors like pollution and their effects on public health. Before diving into the types of interpolation techniques, it's important to remember that there isn't a one-size-fits-all method. Some techniques are more precise but take longer to compute. Others may be faster but less accurate. The choice of method depends on your data, the type of surface you need, and how much error you can tolerate. Generally, you can follow these three steps. One, evaluate the sample data. Understand how your data is distributed, as this might give you clues about which interpolation method to choose. Two, apply a suitable interpolation method. Choose the method that best matches your data and objectives. If you're unsure, try several methods. Three, compare the results. This might seem time consuming at first, but as you gain experience, you'll quickly learn which method works best for different scenarios. You can also control the characteristics of the interpolated surface by limiting the input points used in the calculation. For instance, you might limit the number of points sampled or the area from which points are taken. Many interpolation tools also allow you to incorporate barriers, which are essential when you're working with features like fault lines, cliffs, or streams. These barriers ensure that the surface behaves correctly and doesn't make unrealistic predictions across these features. Now let's briefly touch on the different types of interpolation techniques. Common methods include one, Inverse Distance Weighted, IDW, 2, Kriging, 3, Spline, 4, Natural Neighbors, though with Trend Surface Analysis. The choice of method depends on the nature of your data and how the sample points are distributed. However, no matter which method you choose, the more input points you have and the better they are distributed, the more reliable your results will be. Explaining each technique in detail would require a whole video on its own. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because we'll dive deeper into these techniques in our upcoming video. Finally, let's talk about how interpolation is used in GIS. GIS relies heavily on interpolation to create continuous surfaces from point or line data. For example, you can interpolate contour lines to generate a digital elevation model, DEM, which gives you a detailed representation of the terrain. Interpolation is also used to map rainfall patterns, temperature distributions, and even pollution levels across large areas. It's a powerful tool that helps geospatial professionals make informed decisions in urban planning, environmental monitoring, disaster management, and more. 
And that wraps up our introduction to interpolation. We've covered what interpolation is, its purpose, how to choose the right technique, and how it's applied in GIS. Remember, understanding interpolation is key to making sense of the complex world of spatial data. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our deep dive into the various interpolation techniques in the next video. Thanks for watching.